right, I think we are officially recording. Awesome. You want to go first? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Um, welcome to the TRIO Spotlight Series. Um, today we're going to be talking about Library and Student Achievement Center. My name is Erin Daniels and I am one of the TRIO coach coordinators. So you might end up working with me um, to figure out. Um, I love diving into time management, maybe creating study plans with students. I love getting you tutors, all of that jam. And then I also love getting to know you. So welcome to TRIO for all of those existing TRIO students and then also for those newly acquired TRIO students from Scholars of Promise. All right, my turn, woohoo. Um, hi everybody, my name is Megan Schroeder. I am the other TRIO coach coordinator um, and I am just literally looking forward to um, whatever resources that I can help refer you to, provide to you, um, and learn alongside you and with you um, during these upcoming semesters. And so I am really excited to be talking more about the Madison College Library and the Student Achievement Center and all of the resources that they have to offer. So we're going to dive in today. It's going to be a very more like us showing screen sharing how to use the website to find these services from our knowledge and then we are going to open it up for participants and other students to share maybe ways that they've used it their own creative ways so without further ado we're going to start screen sharing i do have um the libraries open already so i will start to do that so let's see Hopefully you guys can see this little recording bar always gets in the way for me. OK, can you I guys can... you see it? Yep. OK, yeah. so we're going to backtrack just a tad bit. How did I get here? So this is the library's home page. So when you first start off at Madison College homepage, there are several ways that you can get to the library. The way I always choose to get there is by clicking on in the upper right hand corner the library button that'll take you to the home page. Another way that you can get to the library is if you scroll all the way down to the bottom underneath the bookstore, there's a library link there that'll take you there as well. And then there is a third way that I've learned that you can get there that some students have shown me, but it's a couple more clicks. So I, I, I'm just going to stick to the, the quick clicks for now. <laughs> Megan, did you have any other ways of getting to the library link? You know, outside of using that search bar and literally typing in library, I think that's literally those two are the quickest way to get get to the library website. I didn't even think about that option, but yes, if you didn't know that you could click there and there, you can always search library and get to the home. And I believe the other place that um, that you can get there is because you're used to clicking on current students all the time. There is on the side here support services and I believe I've seen some of my students click on that and get to the library from here. Um, I don't usually use this myself, so I'm not seeing the button there. So but I know I've seen a student show me from here. <laughs> so like on the side here, yeah. a lot of them are showing up. I'm seeing the um, I thought I saw the Student Achievement Center, at least the Writing Center, which is part of it. So we're going to just do it the way the first way I mentioned, which was clicking on library from here. So when you think of the library, what is the library and what are the resources and what are they here for? Um, so books, <laughs> libraries have books and they're book focused, but books nowadays are way more than books. You know, it's films, movies, um, there's articles, there's databases that we have access to when you're doing a research project that have scholarly information on that only our students have access to. So this first section here that you see right away is all about if you're doing research and you want to actually dig into a paper for a class or if one of your projects is to discover something or read real articles this is where you'll go we have some research guides that'll teach you how to exactly browse you can look up films or movies because a lot of people refer to that these days i believe they even have some ted talks limited ted talks in there as well 
there's tons of tutorials on how to prepare for research papers. So crap and like how to resource, how to cite your papers and things like that are all right here for you. What's fake news? So we know um, not every piece of news and, and book out there on the internet is credible. And so this tutorial will help you get a sense of that. And then just more about the research, research database and how you can meet with the librarian in the library itself. Over to the right here, we have other components of the library that they offer to you. And so I've gone ahead and pre-clicked on them so we can explore them. Um, I'm just going to scroll. Oh, actually, at the top of the page, you have a lot of other connected resources that aren't necessarily a part of the library but are in the same category for example the student achievement center is not the library but it, it works very closely with the library so you can get right there from up here if there's any important events or any of our regular calendars that you need to access they're all here as well the internet is something more for a faculty and staff if we want to access that um, Ask a library. We have this live chat right here. And then we also have the librarians on call over here that you can live chat with someone as well in case you have any library questions or questions about the website. And then for students, there's all of your regular additional things that you use that are under your current student profile, like your My Matter College and Blackboard. So they just make sure to have everything you need here on the library page. As we scroll down, um, we'll go ahead and um, hopefully hear some um, testimonials or how people have leveraged some of these. I personally leverage LinkedIn learning videos a lot. Basically, LinkedIn le learning is kind of like skill sharing where there's a lot of different like if you want to learn how to do Excel or Outlook or you know different topics that or systems that you're using for a class there's or even time management there's a lot of different videos that you can watch in linkedin learning which is a cool thing that we only have here at madison college booking a tutor we'll go over that later with the student achievement center um, webex for students if you need some help which we'll go over from the student technology help here that's there as well um, being able to quickly download all of your Office 365 onto like maybe a new laptop. I know when we converted to going virtual, this is where you can quickly download those and already have access through your Madison College. And um, if you need any general tutorials, they're also here as mentioned up here as well. So let's click into, oh, actually library book checkouts. So you know how sometimes when the semester starts and you're like, man, I need my book, you know, and then you got to wait for them to ship it or for checkout. Um, there are times when the library will have copies of the books. Now it's limited. So if there's a book that has a code or if there's a book that you would normally have to pay for, even though we have this rental thing going on right now, the library might have it. It might be worth looking at it there. Um, I know I've reached out to the library to scan pages. So until your book arrives, you know, the week one, week two, you might have some assignments to read. They can do that from here as well. So um, we're going to go through um, these buttons to click. But before I do that, I wanted to see if Megan had any additions to this front home page of the library. Um, I think the only thing that I would elaborate on would be the discover and the research guides tabs that Aaron mentioned before. Um, if you have a research paper that you know is coming up, um, please, please, please don't be afraid to use these. Um, there's a lot of scholarly information that you as a student have free access to um, that you would not normally have access to if you were not a student. Um, and that costs hundreds of dollars outside of that just for access to individual databases with that kind of material. So um, if you need to have like a certain number of resources or you're writing up your bibliography for your paper, um, please, please consider using that because it's a great resource. 
Excellent. And, and if you need help finding the research or you're having trouble finding it because like the search words that you're using isn't kind of coming up with what you're looking for, don't be afraid to use that librarians on call function um, because they know how to use the search guides here and they can definitely help you narrow down what it is you're looking for. Excellent. Features that maybe you've seen but didn't know how it works. <laughs> also, our shield up here will take you right back to the home page. Just not by it. So student technology help desk. So the cheat code to so let's say you're having trouble with Blackboard. Let's say you're having trouble with the multi factor authenticator that they keep saying you need a text to your phone in order to approve. Let's say you're having trouble because your teacher is saying you need to go into this other website and you can't get in there. Anything that has to do with computers, if you're a student, you can get help from here. Now, if you um, if this is overwhelming with all of the tabs and all of the things, they have a number that you can call as well. The last four of the four of the number is four 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 four. So um, the full number is here six zero eight two four three four 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 four. There's always someone there to be able to answer and help walk you through. They could even tap into your computer to see what you see so that they can help you problem solve. But this is basically what they tried to come up with or what they achieved here is little quick ways to troubleshoot on your own. So if you're like, oh, I'm having trouble with my student email, you can click on the login and be like, oh, and this is all tips on how to get into and log into your student email. Um, if you're having trouble with printing on campus, which there are still a few students who are on campus. Also, you can request to come on campus um, and you just have to fill, fill out the COVID survey because students have access to free printing still. Um, you, you can, um, there's little guides that they created for that. So uh, that's what this is all about. I recommend you explore on your own. Uh -huh, to just see how everything works. They have everything, e even mobile phone help, which um, is really helpful for a lot of our students. So uh, Megan, did you have any additions for the uh, technology support? I would say in that, um, the only other thing I would mention is in that upper right hand corner where it says remote learning help. Um, there's the quick links that um, will take you to requesting your college laptop if you need one or a hotspot. Um, and then the procedure for picking up that laptop or that hotspot um, and then returning it at the end of the semester. Um, so if you're in need of that additional technological support, um, that would be where you would go or one of the places you could go to find that information, which I know is very important right now. So, yes. And just for those who don't understand what hotspots are, it's basically a Wi-Fi that you can have on your own. So if your computer, if someone else is, if your Wi-Fi is slow or glitchy or a lot of people are using it right now, which they are, or if you live like in an apartment building and it's just so slow, this hotspot will give you your own personal Wi-Fi so that it can move at a, a, a regular pace for just you. So the next tab that I'm going to go to is ways to contact us. So I clicked on that and it just brought you to your typical, all the different ways, their hours, and all of their how to call them, depending on what you need. The chat with us is here again, in case you forget how to get there. Again, I just went to the main library webpage and clicked on ways to connect. And then that's where you would get most of the, your normal contact information. I'm noting here that there's Spanish speaking support that they're very excited about. So if you speak Spanish, better or you prefer to just ask some questions, especially technical questions in Spanish, um, then we do have some hours available here, which is exciting. Um, and then let's see what else they put on here. You can book appointments um, to visit the library. You can't go to the library itself without having an appointment um, scheduled. If that's how you learn best by in person, that is an option and this is where you would do it. It gives all the different campuses. So you in case you're near closer to Watertown or uh, versus Truex or something like that. 
So um, they have the staff here available too, and then you can see what they do, what their roles are, or and you can also see who they are and what their specialty is. Um, it's kind of nice to have a face behind who might be helping you all the time. I know I work with Mark a lot. He's the one who scans the copies for me, <laughs> and I never knew how he looked. So there, there's that. So. <laughs> Um, any additions that you would like to add about the library's contact page? No, nope, I think you I think you hit it right on the head there. Um, for those who, um, like Aaron mentioned, don't live close to Truax, there are those Goodman South Campus hours and there are the regional hours also listed. Um, if for whatever reason, I would say if it's not letting you schedule that appointment um, through the website, I would also just call um to schedule as well and that would i would think that that would be just fine too yeah and if you click here i don't think they have them all listed here but if you were so these are the hours um for truex as default but if you click on the goodman south library they should also have the goodman south this contact information i'm not seeing that but um i know we have the numbers to the centers when all else fails, you can always go back to our actual home page and search Goodman South, and then you can get their number and then contact them there. Um, otherwise, you know, chatting with a librarian right here or calling the general. Uh, well, that's for research. There's um, a tab up at the top that says contacts and locations. So you might actually be able to find their information. That yeah, way. that's perfect. That's perfect. This is where you would contact each of the libraries. OK, so there you go. Excellent. So the next button here that we have is faculty support. Now this is actually not how can a faculty help you, but it's more of how can the library help you if you're faculty. So I'm going to Skip that because you're not faculty on this call. This is for students, but just to clarify. <laughs> the next one that I clicked on is remote learning help. There's an entire button right on the home screen just for where we are today, which is remote learning. And um, so helping you get set up, get connected, get started. How do you set up or schedule like your emails, your blackboards? Um, how to stay productive and active while remote. Um, over here, learn about digital backpack workshops. What is that? Let's look at this. We're exploring people. <laughs> it says our virtual librarian will answer common questions or provide important updates over the next days and weeks. Our real librarians will be online via chat text. So this is again promoting um, the on call, but I'm very curious about that. Um, did it open up somewhere? This digital backpack. Let's explore. Oh, I like that on the left. It's got a bunch of dates of different workshops coming up, like the get your citations in order for students who are writing papers. That's really important. Connecting with classes virtually. I know it's not week one right now, but there still might be some issues with that. Um, I don't know what Ergos is. LinkedIn Learning that I was telling you guys about. That's really yeah. great. It can help you learn about that. Digital citizenship, finding your place in the online world. That's inter that's interesting. Oh, and information. Oh, so I'm assuming this is facts about the uh, vaccination. That's interesting. Again, all of this is remote learning, helpful um, tips and tricks. I just want to make a note like this. The library has such a plethora of resources that I feel um, most students may not be aware of. And if you're a new student um, coming into Madison College, and even if this is your even your second or third or fourth semester, um, it's very possible that you don't know about these resources that are available to you. So even just clicking through the library portion of the Madison College website, as you can see, Aaron and I are already learning a host of new things. 
Uh, Microsoft Teams. That's one that sometimes we use in addition to WebEx. It allows, actually, we're using it right now. So if you have any questions about Teams, because you're used to meeting with your advisor or um, coach over WebEx, this is a great tool. You can use it to interact with other students too. And other and your instructors, you can send them basically like chat messages because we're all on here. So that's interesting. There's a lot of these workshops I want to go to and that was just February. So yeah, I would keep looking at this tab. Again, how did I get here? I was on the library homepage and I just clicked on remote learning help and then that brought me um that brought me to this page and which i then clicked over here on the side on the virtual backpack and that's what we were looking at the digital backpack uh, for all the workshops that they're offering but if we're still looking at remote learning tips and tricks they obviously have some um bullet points at the top here as well um, even on WebEx, um, yeah, it looks like there's a lot of help here. But I understand like when you are stuck, it's hard to think, oh, go to the library and click on this, click on that. So our recommendations are when you're not frantic, just take some time to just peruse through this and see what they have so that when you do need them, you'll know where to go. So the next part of the website, the libraries that we're going to go to is research help. And, uh, uh, you know, we have this discover and research guides over here, but basically the more extrapolated list is here. Um, and you'll know when you have a research project. Um, and so for me, sometimes it's worth just starting with the chat and just saying, this is my project. I've never had research before. Where ha there's a lot going on on this site. Can you just show me how to use it? And then they can go ahead and walk you through the specifics that you need for your project. Oh, all the different maps. That's cool. I won't lie, I definitely used Quizlet a lot as a student. Um, Qu it was Quizlet, it's down near the bottom. Um, it's super helpful if you thrive in using um, note cards to retain information or kind of like test yourself. Um, and you can literally search for any subject and somebody will have created a set of note cards about that subject and you can just quiz yourself or you can make your own. Um, so I definitely used it a lot because it has a lot of like practice tests that you can go through to sort of prep yourself for an upcoming exam. Um, so that uh, was really helpful for me. Excellent. I didn't even know that that existed when I was taking classes. Now that I do, <laughs> can't wait. <laughs> and that's just one. I mean, look at all the other resources that you can use. Yeah. Google Translate, <laughs> I use that sometimes. Really, really cool. There's too much to go over right now. <laughs> so again, when you have some free time um, and you know you're in a class that in the future will have you doing a research paper, perhaps you want to take the time to chat with the librarian now. Um, so that was, again, from the homepage, Research Help. We have one more to go, which is Book a Librarian. So this book a librarian will allow you to see the availability of the open spots when they're available and when they're not. Right now, I'm not seeing any availability. Let's see. Perhaps do you have to be logged in, do you think, Erin? As a student, do you have to be logged in to see their availability? No, nope, it looks like they just weren't available today. Good deal. So tomorrow, we do have some librarians on call. <laughs> Excellent. And it so, looks like they're 30 minutes. Go about booking that, Erin. Would you just click on one of those blue blocks? Yeah, let's let's go back to I selected one of the librarians, so they only show me one. But yeah, if you were to try to book it, it says your booking spot. It gives you the time. Wednesday at three o'clock is when I submitted it. 
I mean, when I'm requesting it. And then in order to submit the time, you click on submit the time. And. Just that easy. It is, um, but I need to cancel it because I don't want to book it. <laughs> so then I have to. All right. Well, just so, so you know. I deleted that and we, I don't need to book one right now. <laughs> you absolutely need that time. Don't click the submit button. Yeah, don't. <laughs> All right, so that is the library. Um, there's so many things you can explore and do. Oh, it looks like they have some recommended books for Black History Month, which is great, which makes me think that every month or maybe they have custom books that they recommend that you read, which is, you know, we, we sometimes forget to use the library as an actual library where you rent out books to read, but it still is exactly that and more. Also on the left there, you can see they're on basically every social media platform that you can think of. Um, and I would guess by just clicking on each one of those icons, it would take you directly to them. So if you're ever wondering if there's, I would imagine upcoming events or um, special information they need to let you know about, you can find it on those as well. There's a library podcast. That's exciting to me. Oh my <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> That's so cool. Overdue book, <laughs> the overdue podcast. That's so smart. Oh, I'm geeking out here. Okay, so on my downtime outside of this um, spotlight, I'm going to really check that out. So the next portion of what we wanted to talk about today is the Student Achievement Center, which to me was very confusing. I thought that the library and the Student Achievement Center were kind of the same thing, but mm -hmm. apparently I now know that they're two separate things, but they look alike I, in person. If you're on the Truex campus, one is on the second floor and one's on the third floor. They're kind of in the same area, but they do different. Kind of look alike though, so that makes sense. You what? They do kind of look alike. What even? They, they do. Wait, when you're looking up from the first floor between the second and the third, even just looking at them, they environmentally they look similar. So they have big glass walls basically mm -hmm. so that you can get that natural light. Um, but when you think of libraries as for books and technology and support from that and student achievement center is exactly that. So it's additional achievement. And so my first thing that I always use this for is tutoring. Um, that's what we need help with <laughs> the most. Now there are these other buttons and I don't have those open right away. Um, I did want to call out that you can chat with someone from the Student Achievement Center as well, which is different from chatting with a librarian, but they talk to one another. At one point I was trying to find a tutor for something and accidentally clicked the librarian and then they switched me over to chatting with someone and tutoring. So they, they definitely work really well together. So the first one here, book a tutor, is going to be something that I highly recommend that you bookmark by clicking the star and, and adding it to your bookmark. But um, the first way I use this, honestly, I don't even look at anything else. The first way I use this is click on the here button <laughs> because this here button is how you actually request a tutor for your classes. So. Um, we will go over all of the other points and explore, but I really want you to know this, this here button right here. So <laughs> once you click on it. Now I don't have any classes, so I will attempt to log in as my student account, but I don't cur I'm not currently in a class, so it's not going to really. We'll see what what happens, but basically you log in as your student email. I wonder if the strengths finder will pop up because that's a class for us. So maybe actually I'll log in as a as a staff and see. Although it might have you logged in as staff already because you've got navigate open, so that may be why it's denying you. Oh. Well, let me close that and refresh this. And maybe try once more. You might just have to close it and try opening another tab by clicking on the login button again. 
I see it thinking here. Oh, yeah. So you're saying I might have to close it and then. And click on the wherever you want to log in again. OK, so here. clicking here again. It may just not like me at the moment, but I can walk you through how it looks. When you click on login and it's working, <laughs> it'll bring you basically, it'll show you your student ID number and then you, I mean your student email, and then you can just click forward and enter your password and then it'll open up. I don't know, Megan, do you have access? I am going to try to make it work. We will see. Um, give me just a second and if I can get to the right place. Following that path that you talked about earlier, starting at the library and then going up to the top. Mm -hmm. So while Megan's looking at that, there's a couple of other features here on the Student Achievement Center that I think we should look at. So brains fuse. Anyone here have issues with um, math? <laughs> OK, I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one. <laughs> so brain fuse is basically a live interactive online tutoring for math, all kinds of math. And so this is the place you want to come to if you're like, OK, I, I just want to practice some assignments or I want to work with a tutor. This is separate from the tutoring services that we also offer for your math classes. So this is additional math support. The next one that we have here and Megan, I can see you. So when you do get access, if you want to just raise your hand and then I'll know to come back to you. So Khan Academy. It says click on course to get great tut tutorials. So again, this reminds me of the quick lits that Megan was talking about where you can come in here and click on the subject. You maybe you're a learner and then you actually want to just. Oh, I don't want to put my birth date in. <laughs> you can put your birth date in. OK, Meg is ready, so I'll just finish with this. Um, this is just a way for you to be able to discover by subject matter um, different tutorials. So again, kind of like skill sharing, but specifically for academic classes and subjects. And then now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and Megan's going to share hers to help us go into um oh this is okay to help us go into that other part of booking a live um booking a tutor okay so if yes. you are anything like me my first instinct would just be to start clicking around in here to just figure out what it is you need to do um but this really helpful instruction paragraph uh, is probably your best bet. So the first thing that it says to do, um, if you're looking to make an appointment with the Student Achievement Center tutors, the first thing you're going to want to do is click on this button over here that says search availability and then select the Student Achievement Center online tutoring in the drop down menu and click search to view the availabilities. If you are looking to book an appointment with somebody in the writing center, um, so that they can review a paper like a research paper that you need to submit. Um, you would do the same thing. Click the search availability and then select Writing Center Live in the drop down menu and click search to view the availability. So let's see what happens. All right, so, so from here you click the center and then yeah, what it said, it said Writing Center or Student Achievement Center online. So, so let's click on that and see what happens. So it just basically makes another drop down menu. And that drop down menu for students will have a list of all your classes actually. So every one of your classes that you're currently enrolled in will be here. And then when you click on the class, then you would be able to um, from there see all the tutors available for that specific class subject. So if I was, for instance, in intermediate algebra, or English one or microbiology. Um, those would all be listed here and then upon me choosing one um, and clicking the search button, it would show me the available tutors 
for those individual subjects. So and I don't. Time. So it's not going to let me. It's not going to let me see the big list because obviously I don't have a course to choose. But maybe it'll give us something different if I go over to the writing center. Well, yeah, the writing center is always available. So once you click on your class, this is how it will look for tutoring, actually. And all I recommend you do is click search right away. So once you hit search, then this is how it will look for each of your class. These are all the people and times available for um, that class. So obviously right now we're in writing center, but mm -hmm. um, this is how it will look if you were to click on intermediate algebra. Oh, and this is interesting. Up here, it's got a key, so you can choose to do um, just a random drop in. You can choose to have a one on one appointment or you can have a multi person class or group. So maybe one tutor and maybe there's three or four students in the group. And uh, something to note, they are open and available on the weekends. And so I know a lot of people have assignments due Sunday at 11.59 or Friday at 11.59. And though our normal services and advisors and coaches are not available that late, the, the tutors and, and writing center are. Yeah, so I think and it's really helpful. You can narrow it down by time if you know you're only available, you know, between let's say 4 and 7.30 on Tuesdays. It will narrow that down immediately and show you exactly what's available. Um, so maybe we just click all and as you can see there's plenty of staff that can help you during those times. Um, you can see each individual um, slot is 45 minutes long and Aaron you can correct me if I'm wrong it's you're able to book seven sessions a week 45 minutes at a time so you could literally hypothetically meet with a tutor every single day of the week for 45 minutes at a time. That's what you're entitled to as a student. Is that correct? Yes, and what I usually do is I recommend like a lot of my um, math students that I help uh, or chemistry or science students when they have a sign, you know, you guys all have modules when you're online. Modules might be a word you're used to, and then you know, like one portion of it is due in class. That's what you're going to do. And then the final part of the module is due another day. So you can space it out where you have a tutor right after your class. Then you do, then you review what they recommended, and then you meet with the tutor again right before you have to turn in the assignment. So, I do usually recommend a good rule of thumb is to meet with the same tutor or meet with a tutor twice for each assignment that you're working on. And in the case of the writing center, I usually recommend that you need to do your own draft. And I, I'm going to share my screen again because um, there is a specific place that they want you to turn in that draft. So if we go back to the home page. Oh, this is good because I didn't know this. So this is and in here. If you search tutoring or tutoring, tutor or tutoring, the first link is online tutoring form. So this is where you would fill out and then you would actually upload your paper or upload an assignment that you've done or upload. So if you have a document that you want your tutor to be able to review with you. This is where you submit that actually. And then um, so what I usually do when I um, help people schedule appointments, you'll schedule appointment far enough out where you can do your first draft and then you can upload your first draft here and then you know you have your tutoring appointment like say the next day or something like that and then they help you with that first draft. You take it home, you make draft number two. And then you upload draft number two, repeat the process, meet with the tutor again to make sure that that's good. And then that could be your final draft before you have to turn in like a major paper or something like that. That's the flow that I usually find the best and most effective to getting um, the best results on your papers um, if you're using the writing center. Um, and then for as far as tutoring, you know, because we have a lot of online modules and things like that, if there's like a document that you were emailed and um, to, from your instructor that's not in those modules or something like that, that you want your tutor to be able to have as well, that's what you can use the sheet for. So it's not specific to writing center or um, 
writing center or student achievement center. It's for both. So I'm going to try to quickly get get through the rest of these. So there was another math tutoring, a live tutoring that you can do as an individual or group. So although we have brain fuse here, we also have math live tutoring. This is brain fuse and then this is the math life tutoring and the hours are here and then literally you just click on the live button and someone's available there to help you and it's through blackboard which is exciting because you're already in there in your class most likely and then you can like share your documents or whatever you need um this here um I'm not really sure about to be really transparent and honest, so I clicked on it already and we'll see what it ends up telling us. Learning Express Library, so it says high school equivalents. They have jobs and career, so it looks like this is another kind of type of skill sharing by category place that you can click on and depending on what you need help with. It looks like larger than just your classes, so more for your career and your life, um, mm -hmm. which is exciting. Again, click around because I'm reading down here. It says skill building resources for classroom and homework success. So maybe that's like study skills and and, and this is a adult core skills for personal and career education. Um, if you have some time, go ahead and click around and explore and click on all the options. Um, there's even resources for people who speak Spanish, um, which is again very exciting because sometimes when you're learning new technical things it's easy to hear in a, in a in the language that you're most familiar with and last but not least the button here is linkedin learning and linkedin learning basically they have some instructions if it's your first time um but i'm in here all the time i mean there's so many different um many courses that you can take. Some of them are 30 minutes, some of them are 15 minutes, some of them are hours, some of them are five hour long classes that let you sign out, come back in, and it just depends on what topic. They have everything from how to Photoshop a picture to um, how to um, think creatively, like uh, all of those different things on there. So looks like these are the top courses that people use in linkedin learning photoshop is one of them which makes sense i'm always curious about that graphic design excel um and then the number one here is teams Microsoft. that's no surprise to me actually and then autocad i've heard about that i don't know what it is maybe sean might know what it is i feel like it's in the it world <laughs> recommended recommended classes that you can take here um but basically yeah you just sign in and you can sign in using your madison college credentials this is usually something you have to pay a subscription for that's very expensive so uh yeah it's sometimes like i have a student right now who's in the degree program for outlook but she could also just be in linkedin learning for free and learn about outlook there so that might be an option so Today, again, the purpose of our spotlights are just to really focus on different areas of our website or of the school and give you an insight to, oh, I didn't even know we had that. And maybe hopefully pique your interest and then you can use it to customize yourself or you can even work with Megan or myself as a coach to help you dive in to see how you can most effectively use our tools. Um, we're always very excited to help you with that. We even have guest speakers coming up in the future for some of our spotlights. Um, otherwise, it'll be me and Megan. Go ahead and clicking through and learning at the same time and sharing what we know. But with the last five minutes, I know we do have at least one participant here. If there's any questions or recommendations of how you use the website. Uh, is this uh, the time when I should talk? Um, no, um, very, very helpful uh, with the Writing Center, and um, you did go in some areas that I did not know anything about. 
uh, being here for at least three semesters, four semesters now. Um, and um, AutoCAD is a, 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 a program that lets you draw, um, like uh, in senior class, I had milk drug, um, milk carton. You have to draw as a, like a two-dimensional, uh, like how you would fold a milk carton and like it's with like the folded lines and like you build it's like so it's like how you make how boxes put together whatever it's it's very technical um that's why i didn't go too far in that, in that one um but yeah no uh to answer that question all right so stop sidetrack um so yeah no um very uh very helpful and um yeah um i thought you uh thought that this very thoroughly uh explained um um uh, not only on one end, but on uh, on multiple levels, um, like explaining how multiple aspects of of, of a certain thing you need to to get to it, or to be able to uh, identify certain elements of it, or whatever. So yeah, very uh, very great, and um, you know, very much looking forward to that writing center. So you know, Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's my two cents. But it, it was great. It was great, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to, um, unless Megan has any final, I'll let Megan close out and stop recording when she wants. Uh, but this will be available for anyone who wants to keep re-watching it and slow it down or speed it up or pause it to see how to use it themselves.